Okay guys, so today we're going to look at linear quadratic systems. So we're going to suppose that we have a function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 1 and then g of x is equal to 4x plus 4 and we're going to say that they're graphed together. Okay, and the question is where will they intersect? At which points will they intersect? So I want you to notice that f of x is a quadratic function and g of x is a linear function. So when we're talking about a linear quadratic system, we're talking about what happens when you have a quadratic function and a linear function considered at the same time. Now, last year you guys talked a bit about linear systems, and linear systems are when you consi are considering two lines at the same time. And remember that the solution to a linear system is going to be the point of intersection. Well, the solution to a linear quadratic system is also going to be any points of intersection. Okay. So the question here is, where will they intersect? But before we get to that question, we probably should ask ourselves one other thing. Will they intersect at all? Because maybe it's possible that these two functions won't intersect at all. So there are three possibilities for a linear quadratic system. So uh, these are the three possibilities, right? In the first case, you might have something that looks like this, okay? Where you have a line and a parabola, and they cross at two different points. Okay. Second case, you might have something like this, where you have a line and a parabola that cross at just one point. Okay. Third case is where you have a line and a parabola and they don't cross at all. So in the first case we have two points of intersection, in the second case we have one point of intersection, and in the third case we have no points of intersection. Okay. So uh, we're going to consider part way into this question first whether there's going to be any points of intersection, but also we're going to find if, uh, if there are points of intersection we're going to find out what they are. Okay. So we're looking for the points of intersection of this quadratic function, f of x, and this linear function, g of x. So these are our two functions, just written again for this page. So f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 1, and g of x is equal to 4x plus 4. So uh, at the point of intersection, okay, so at the point of intersection, uh, or if there's more than one at the point of intersections, uh, f of x should be equal to g of x. Now what that means is that the y value of f of x will be the same as the y value of g of x. Now that makes sense because we're talking about the same point, right? If there's a point of intersection, then both functions have that point on them. So what we do is we're going to set f of x equal to g of x. And when we do that, we get 2x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to 4x plus 4. So we, we literally set f of x equal to g of x. Okay? Now, setting these equal to each other, uh, we can actually bring everything over to one side, and then we can collect the like terms, like we do here, giving us 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Now, you might notice that this line here, this is actually a quadratic equation that we can solve, right? And we've talked about solving quadratic equations uh, the day before yesterday. All right, we talked about how you could solve it by factoring, you could solve it by graphing, you can solve it by using the quadratic formula, or even completing the square if you want to do that. Now, before we solve this, uh, this quadratic equation, we're going to just take an aside for the moment, and we're going to consider how many points of intersection are there in this, in this, uh, this linear quadratic system. So in order to check how many points of intersection there are, we are going to go back and check the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so this is just like when, what, we, uh, what we did when we talked about uh, solving quadratic equations. We check the discriminant. So I'm going to take the a, b, and, fee, uh, and b, uh, sorry, a, b, and c value for this particular quadratic equation, and I'm going to substitute it in for the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, and we get negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. Okay? Simplifying that out, we get 49. So since our discriminant is positive, that tells us that our quadratic equation has two solutions, all right? and since the quadratic equation was formed by uh, taking a quadratic function and a linear function, setting them equal to each other in order to find the point of intersection, those two solutions to this quadratic equation are actually going to be the x values of our points of intersection. So now we're going to solve this quadratic equation now that we know that there are going to be two solutions. All right, and I'm going to choose the method of factoring. So we're going to find our sum and our product, which are negative 5 and negative 6. 
Those give us the two numbers, uh, special numbers of negative 6 and positive 1, because negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, and negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. And that's going to allow us to decompose this, uh, this quadratic, because, of course, it is a complex quadratic trinomial, so we have to use the method of decomposition to factor it. So we split the middle term into negative uh, 6x plus x, okay? Then we're going to common factor the first two terms and then common factor the second two terms, which gives us 2x times x minus 3 plus 1 times x minus 3, and that's equal to 0. And then we have the uh, common binomial factor of x minus 3, which we're going to common factor out front, and that's going to leave us with x minus 3 times 2x plus 1 equals to 0. So this is fully factored now, and we're going to use this factored form to come up with the zeros. So that factor, if we set that factor equal to 0, uh, we get an x value of 3. And if we set this factor equal to 0, we're going to get ourselves an x value of negative 1 over 2. So these two x values are the solution to the quadratic equation that we created over here. But since that quadratic equation is the result of setting a linear function and a quadratic function equal to one another, in order to find the point of intersection, these x values are actually going to be the x values of our points of intersection. So we're almost there. Next thing we need to do is find the y values of our point of intersection. So the points of intersection are going to occur at x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 over 2, right? So we have two points of intersection just like we predicted. Now to find the y values of the points of intersection, what we're going to do is we're going to take our x values and we're going to substitute, substitute them into either one of g of x or f of x, Okay, so we're going to find g of 3 or f of 3 because we're going to check for the y value when x is equal to 3 first. And I chose to do g of 3 since using a quadratic is much simpler. So substituting 3 in for g, we get 4 times 3 plus 4, which gives a, a, us a value of 16. And that tells us that the y value, when x is 3, is going to be 16. In other words, one of the points of intersection is going to be at 3, 16. Okay. Now, of course, we have our second point of intersection, so we're going to find g of negative 1 over 2 or f of negative 1 over 2. Either one will be okay. They'll give you the exact same answer. And again, I'm going to choose to use the linear function, by sub so I'm going to substitute negative 1 over 2 in for g, and that's going to give us a value of 2. So the y value that's associated with an x value of negative 1 over 2 is 2. And that tells us that we have a point of intersection at negative 1 over, uh, 1 over 2, 2. Okay, so we have two points of intersection, 316 and negative 1 over 2, 2. And those are the solutions to that linear quadratic system that we started off with. So this is the method that you would follow in, in order to solve any linear quadratic system. Um, so remember, set both functions equal to one another, create a quadratic equation, solve the quadratic equation to get the x values, and then substitute the x values back into one of the two original equations to get the y values. Hope this has been helpful, guys. Take care.